Um, if you wasn't doing badminton, what would you think you'd be doing? Oh, that's a good, it's a tough question. It's really hard to say because so much of my life was based around playing badminton. You know, I went to university at Leeds Met Uni, um, but the reason I went to Leeds Met was because they had a good training set up. Uh, and I did sports exercise science because they could help me get onto that degree because I was also a player. Um, so, you know, a lot of my education, a lot of my decisions from a very young age have been based around pursuing badminton. Um, I, could, I do think I would have been very been tempted to go down the sporting route. I th- um, you know, I really, I've so always enjoyed it. is your sport. forte then? It's sort of just, you gravitated towards it basically. Yeah, I think so. You know, I've always loved like the physical exertion and the endorphins and all that sort of stuff. And, and to be honest, now, when I, now that I've kind of played and got a bit of life experience, I do think sport journalism would be something that I'd have been really interested in. Um, so, yeah, definitely could have gone down that route. Um, but, you know, it's very hard to say because a lot of decisions affect that kind of thing. But when I stopped playing um, either sports journalism or my dream would be to open my own coffee shop. But that's just because. Oh, really? Coffee. Where would oh, you wow. open that? Would you open it in Carlisle or Milton Keynes? Ooh, that's a tough one. I or think both. both. Yeah, why not both? Why not both? Yeah. Not a short commute, but why not both? <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favourite venue to play in, or country even? Favourite country you played in? Um. Well, I have to be biased and say that I love playing at the All England in Birmingham. Um. You know, the home crowd is is something really really special. Um. But if I had to say somewhere outside of the home crowd and outside of the UK, I would probably go with Indonesia. Um, You know, as I mentioned earlier, they use their one sport. And actually, it's unbelievable when you play in there sometimes, if you're playing against Indonesians or if there's Indonesians playing (coughs) alongside you on another court, you can't even hear yourself yourself speak. You have to, so, you know, you communicate with your doubles partner. Sometimes you say where you're going to serve or communicate a tactic or speak to your coach and literally you're about like this far away from each other just yelling in each other's face because the crowd is so loud um because they do get behind their players and it's yeah it's like nothing else um so you know I've definitely had some of my greatest performances there just because of the atmosphere and just because of the lift that gives you um but it does make it hard if you're playing against uh home players the crowds do don't hold back if they want to <laughs> it's just like any sport really would you say badminton's made you mentally is, is made you the woman you are basically mentally powerful and strong no thanks <laughs> no that's all right no because you, you you seem very you seem very focused and driven i was just wondering has is that um just being in your nature or, or has badminton helped you with that being an I athlete think- there's a, an element of nature and nurture. Um, you know, I come, my mum's very tough. Um, I know she's, you know, very strong willed and, and to, to the point of me and her have had big arguments because both of us are that stubborn about our point of view that we just <laughs> shout at each other. But, you know, that's a strong sign of a strong willed woman. And um, I definitely, <laughs> a lot of it's come from playing sport. You know, sport is it's a roller coaster you have the highest in, of highs you know you're, you're up here and you're feeling incredible and the next day you could literally be rock bottom feeling like you've never played worse and you know you go through so many big emotions that you need to be able to deal with those and you know for me part of my who I am as a player and what people know they're going to get from me when they step on court is a lot of grit a lot of determination even if I'm playing really badly I'm going to fight and I'm going to make them have to beat me I'm never going to roll over and let anyone beat me and I think players that play me know that and you know coming through juniors um, I wasn't ever the most talented or skillful player I was almost the most physical um, and the most gutsy and I think that's what got me through juniors and got me through a lot of my early uh, senior career Um, and my game's changed in the last few years um, for various reasons for very technical reasons Um, I've adapted my game but without that kind of um, grit and determination that I had when I was in my teens when I was coming through, I wouldn't be the player I am today. Um, so I definitely think a lot of it's come from sport. Um, some of it was definitely in there already, but I've, I've learned a lot about, about being tough. You mentioned that your parents have helped you and they've motivated you, encouraged you to do what you want. Is there anyone else that's encouraged you, motivated you? Um, 
I mean, I've had some really great coaches over the years. Um, and, you know, all the coaches I had as, as a junior, I'm still in touch with. Um, so, you know, I think that shows quite a lot about the sort of relationship that I had with them. Um, you know, my coach now, well, there's a few coaches at the Batman Centre, but my coach now, Anthony Clark, is, um, was a player himself. He, um, he won world championship medals. Um, he went to Olympics. You know, he <laughs> top five in the world for a lot of his career. And so he's a really great player and somebody that has spent a lot of time with me working on areas of the game that I avoided for quite a long time. Um, so, you know, I was always a rear court player. I was always quite a physical, strong player. And when I started playing mixed with Marcus, uh, Clark, he spent the time with me in the forecourt in more skillful parts of the game. Uh, I'll try not to be too badminton-y, but um, that time that he put in um, and energy that he put in has changed me as a player a lot. And I think he was, he, it's not like anyone ever told me I couldn't be a net player. It's just that he was the first person to be like, no, you really can be a net player. You know, um, you've got a lot of potential here. And, he opened my eyes to that and put in the time, which was a lot of time needed to make me better at that. And that's something that has got me from a player that was, you know, I was in women's doubles, I was always around 20 in the world, which was decent. It was good. I went to the Olympics. Um, but now, you know, I'm More than nine. The fantastic, really. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's incredible you, to have that confidence as well. And, to have those people behind you, you know, surely that's helped you obviously just to make, to make you such a success. What, what else would you say is the key to success other than family and your people backing you? What, what else would you say makes you make, made you such a great player? I think a lot of it is like what we talked about before is my mindset and my approach to stuff is, um, I don't know if it's because I'm a northerner and I'm just really stubborn, but it's like, I will train and train and train until I get it right. Um, and I'm not afraid to push myself physically, you know, I kind of thrive on those hard physical situations. Um, and I think for me, that's just kind of my core as a player is that sort of grit and determination. Um, you know, because it's just like I've said before, it's not an easy ride, you know, being a sports person, there's ups, there's downs, it's very emotionally demanding. And for me to have just been able to handle that and deal with that and kind of still get on with things even though I might not be feeling great I think is what's kind of got me to where I am today um obviously with the help of, of my great team of people what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on the court anything funny happened or I mean I've fallen over a few times <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, I once funny. tried so we were playing in Germany and sometimes your string breaks um mm -hmm. so obviously you can't then hit the shuttle properly because the string's a bit broken so i was playing doubles my partner hit the shot and i decided to run off court and pick up another racket out like right. out my back with the strings in picked it up the they smashed it at me as i got back on court and i swung at it and i was like oh yeah i've hit that you know you can kind of feel when you've hit it yeah 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 and and then the shuttle hit me in the stomach and I was like, what on earth has gone hit oh, on Oh no, you missed it. Did it go right through? Or did you just... There were no strings in the racket that I picked up. Oh no. <laughs> I ran off court with a racket with strings that were broken, picked a racket up to come back on and it was a, it was a stringless racket. So that was a bit of a, a, bit of a disaster. So oh, that, yeah. No. Well, it yeah. happens to the best anyway. It's got to, you know. There we go. So, yeah. <laughs>